Math students, this is a quick um, lesson recap for chapter one, lesson one. For those of you who missed class or were in class and spacing out or just need a little bit of extra help, hopefully this gets you pointed in the right direction. Um, in this lesson, we talked about exponents. So we started off by um, reminding ourselves that powers are made up of two, two components, a base and an exponent. The base we know is the uh, it's the number that is being multiplied. So the number being multiplied. And the exponent on the other hand is the number that tells how many times um, we multiply the base by itself. I'm kind of abbreviating things, but if you're listening, you get the picture. The visual component might help you here. Um, the base is the, the big number. That's the number that we are going to multiply, and the exponent tells us how many times to multiply that number by itself. So in this example, 3 to the fourth power, that would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 which is not 12. I know that's the easy mistake to make. Oftentimes we look really quick and we're like, oh, three to the fourth power, 12, duh. But no, it's three times three times three times three, which in this case is 81. Three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So the base tells us what number we are multiplying and the exponent, how many times we're multiplying it by itself. We also talked about some of the fancy uh, exponent language, like anything to the second power is that thing squared. So this would be three squared or three to the second power. And anything to the third power, we call that cubed. Three to the third power would be three cubed, for example. Um, we also talked about the two types of exponent problems you'll probably see. One would be asking you to write each product, aka each multiplication problem, as a power, as an exponent. So this one would be written as four to the fifth power because four is the number being multiplied, the base, and it's being multiplied five times, the exponent. The other type of problem you'd see is just to straight up find the value of the power. That means to, sh to multiply it. So five squared is 10, not, hope I didn't trick you, 5 squared means 5 times 5, which is 25. There we go. Um, another one, 2 to the 5th power. Oh, it's the same numbers. It's probably just 25. Be careful. It's not just 25. 2 to the 5th power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. All right. Um, what else can we recap from lesson 1? We talked about a couple special rules. The only one I'm gonna focus on is the second, which is anything to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is one. That is a rule. It's a rule that you will have a better understanding of when you have a little more math knowledge. We'll talk more about why this is, but for now, it's a rule that you should know. Anything that has an exponent of zero equals one. So five to the zero power equals 1, 63 to the 0 power equals 1. If I give you any number to the 0 power, it equals 1. We also talked about, like, don't be fooled if you see 5 plus 3 squared minus 4 to the 8th power divided by 16 to the 0 power. This whole thing to the power of 0 tells us that it's going to equal 1. Always does. 0 power makes the whole thing one. What else can we go over here? Ah, we also talked about perfect squares. So for example, 64 is considered a perfect square. Why? Because it has a number that can be multiplied by itself to get a product of 64. Any number that has a number multiplied by itself to get that product is considered perfect. So 20 is not a perfect square because there's nothing multiplied by itself that can get you to 20. 4 times 5 is 20, 2 times 10 is 20, 
There is nothing times itself, though, that will equal 20, so this is not considered a perfect square. Perfect square. Not a perfect square. Same with 2. No number times itself can equal 2, so that is also not a perfect square. Perfect squares are numbers that have uh, a whole number multiplied by itself that can get you to that number. Other than that, this part of the chapter um, pretty much just outlined it. If you have any further questions or need extra help, you'll have to reach out. I hope this helps you, though. Good luck studying. See ya.